According to the latest information, the deadly attacks in Paris were being planned for the last nine months. In fact, two terrorists have been identified till now, one of them a Parisian. The other, a 15-year-old Syrian who reportedly entered Europe through Greece, masked as a refugee in October. There are also reports that a woman attacker was among those behind the carnage at the Bataclan Theatre. What's also known now is that terrorists were split into three teams. One with three terrorists deputed to attack the battle colon, the deadliest which killed nearly 90 concert goers. The other team of two was sent to the national stadium outside Paris. The two detonated themselves in a span of 10 minutes. The third team also of two terrorists went on a shooting spree in some of the best known areas of Paris. They managed to kill nearly 40 people. Well, the French police have identified one of the gunmen who blew himself up at the Bataclan concert hall as 29-year-old Paris native Omar Ismail Mustafi. His father and 34-year-old brother have been taken into custody by the police and a source close to the probe said that investigators are searching the homes of other friends and relatives of the killer. Let's now take a look at who Omar Ismail Mustafi was. Omar Ismail was born on the 21st of November 1985. He was born in a Paris suburb. He was known to the police as a petty criminal. His criminal records show eight convictions between 2004 and 2010. Identified as high priority target for radicalization. In fact, the probe is now on to determine if he took a trip to Syria. Now his identity has been ascertained by his severed finger that was found in the rubble at the Bataclan Hall. Now police have taken his brother and father into custody and are searching their homes as well. The Greek government has confirmed the passport holders' fingerprints have turned up in their database. The individual registered himself as an asylum seeker on a Greek island in early October. Greek sources believe another one of the terrorists may also have passed through. And then there's the Belgian connection. Video footage and witnesses have said that one of the cars used by the Kalashnikov carrying terrorists had Belgian license plates. The black polo was rented by a French national who lives in Belgium. He and two passengers were pulled over near the border on Saturday in a different vehicle. They were later arrested. The file has been opened. Um uh, for the terrorist attack and uh, participation at the activi activities of a terrorist organization. Uh, pleasures, um, multiple arrests and uh, search warrants have been executed. Uh, these operations are still ongoing. As with the Stade de France suicides, investigators said the deadliest of the attacks, the Bataclan hostage siege, was carried out by a group of three men. One of the suicide bombers' fingers was found at the scene, and he was identified. A French national, he'd never been to jail, but he had been tagged as a potential threat. Members of his family were taken into custody late Saturday. Well, and a lot of planning and logistical support for the Paris attack seems to have originated in neighboring Belgium. According to French police sources, the multiple terror attacks in Paris seem to have their origin in Belgium, specifically in Molenbeek, a suburb of the capital Brussels. Evidence found in the terror locations are leading investigators to this locality, which houses a number of Syrian refugees. In fact, three suspected accomplices have already been arrested from the region. Not only this, one of the terrorists reportedly entered European Union masked as a refugee through Greece this October, leading to fears that more terrorists may have entered the Schengen visa area through this route. Let's now take a look at uh, the Molenbeek area, which is a suburb of uh, Brussels. It is uh, a residence uh, to Syrian refugees and uh, in fact uh, some have described it as a den of terrorists. It in fact is one of the poorest areas in Europe. In fact uh, three of the terrorists who were who are believed to be accomplices of the terrorists who wreaked havoc in Paris have been arrested from this area.
The ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attacks that wreaked havoc across Paris. Reports say ISIS supporters have been celebrating the attack in Paris, sharing their views on Twitter with the hashtag Paris is burning. A grisly bloodbath on the streets of one of the world's best-loved cities. As panic gripped Paris, memories of the bloodshed at the Charlie Hebdo office earlier this year weren't far behind. For both these attacks, the dreaded outfit ISIS took responsibility. C'est un acte de guerre qui a été commis par euh, une armée terroriste, Daesh. An armed jihadist against France. Just days ago, the ISIS released another video specifically targeting France. Exploser la France, réduire la, la France en miettes. The Friday, the 13th nightmare in Paris is being read as a backlash for France's proactive stance against the ISIS in Syria and Iraq. Their faces uncovered, speaking French with French accents. One of them said, you killed our brothers in Syria. Just last week, France had announced that an aircraft carrier would be deployed in the Persian Gulf. Despite the ISIS terror threat, the French Premier said the war on terror would be unsparing. We will be ruthless in our fight because when terrorists are capable of carrying out such atrocities as this, we need to face up to them. France needs to show determination. It needs to come together and stand united. While the people of Paris scrambled to pick up the pieces in the wake of the worst attack in their city, the jihadists celebrated the attacks on Twitter with a boast of further targets in London, Rome and Washington. Can the Western world unite and scuttle the ISIS onslaught? Bureau Report, India Today. Well, a day after terror attacks in Paris killed 129 people, the Islamic State has released another undated video. The video opens with shots of French passports being burnt and goes on to show an Islamic State militant, Abu Salman, asking people to terrorize the people of France and not allow them to sleep in peace. The video also shows Abu Salman flanked by several other terrorists asking people to humiliate the French in any way possible as they only deserve that. Hijra sur cette terre, travailler en France, laissez-les ne pas dormir, laissez-les dans le stress, laissez-les dans l'insécurité. Il y a des armes, il y a des voitures, il y a des cibles prêtes, il y a même du poison, si vous pouvez mettre même du poison et le faire boire. Meanwhile, hospitals in Paris are now facing a serious crisis of blood for patients who've been admitted in hospitals after the ghastly terror attacks. Even with 19 blood donation centers in Paris and citizens and tourists queuing up to donate blood, supplies are still running short due to sheer number of patients who've been admitted. He's 30 years old. He was with friends last night at Bataclan. If anyone has any news or has seen him, if you have seen him in hospital, please let me know. Desperate for news, a woman asks for help finding her friend. They'd been attending a gig at the Bataclan concert venue, the target of a deadly attack. When the assailants opened fire on the audience, she lost him in the crowd. She's been contacting hospitals and police stations trying to find him. Here at the George Pompidou Hospital, nearly all of the injured have been identified. Even when I worked in Afghanistan, I never saw 60 people injured in one attack. These are injuries of war because assailants used weapons of war. During the night, doctors came from other hospitals to help. By morning, there were long lines as people waited to give blood. But supplies are still running short. It has been non-stop since this morning. Unfortunately, we have a lot of patients who need this. Is there a blood shortage? Yes, a serious shortage. The 19 blood donation centers across Paris saw an influx of Parisians and even tourists hoping to help. Officials have called for donations of blood to continue in the following days. Well, as terror struck Paris, there were reports of a fire in a refugee camp at Calais. Take a look at this report. 
is the spot where the fire tore through uh, the Calais refugee camp just last night. Of course, uh, the authorities here were concerned because these events from this fire was unfolding just as the events in Paris were taking place, those terrorist attacks. And it's not clear what caused the fire just yet, but I think we can take a listen to the deputy mayor of Calais. There's about uh, 10,000 square meters uh, on fire. Um, we don't know the origin of the fire yet, but uh, uh, no, if people have been injured or whatsoever. Uh, so the, the fire brigades and, uh, are fighting to, uh, to reduce as much as they can the fire, but because of the wind, it's very difficult. We can see the cleanup operation here is underway, and a lot of the migrants uh, have been standing around watching uh, it as it takes place. Now, you can imagine if you've fled war back home and you're trying uh, to get to a safe place, you've traveled through multitudes of countries, uh, the very few possessions that you do have are going to be extremely precious to you, which is why people have been getting a little bit heated now uh, at the charity workers uh, when they haven't been letting them through to access the site, perhaps to gather up some of their belongings. Now, a lot of the people here have fled uh, ISIS and Islamic State terrorists back in the Middle East or in North Africa. And they've come here thinking that at least even though this is uh, called the jungle, it's uh, inhabited by 6,000 people, it's effectively a shantytown, a slum, they at least thought that they were safe uh, from uh, the Islamic a lot of people witnessed the bloodbath in Paris and saw terror unfold in its most brutal form. Here's an account from some of the eyewitnesses. Benjamin still bears the marks of the carnage in the battle clan. He and his wife Celia were in the venue on Friday night. They were close to the exit when half an hour into the concert, they heard gunfire. Everyone started panicking, throwing themselves on the ground. So we lay down. We were all lying down. They were shooting everywhere. Their survival instinct kicked in. We were all on the floor. We didn't move. We wanted the ground to open and swallow us up so we wouldn't be seen. They were just a few meters from the assailants. It was an ordeal that lasted more than a quarter of an hour. I saw two gunmen, their faces uncovered, speaking French with French accents. One of them said, you killed our brothers in Syria, and here we are. After a long wait, security forces finally went on the assault. There was an exchange of fire, then it quietened down. Some people took the opportunity to get out then. The gunfire soon started again. We stayed lying on the ground and then someone said, get out, get out. For a few moments, the gunmen slipped out of sight. Celia and Benjamin rushed to the exit to flee. We went down the stairs. There were people lying dead on the staircase. There was blood, broken glass everywhere. It was like something from a war. It was half an hour after midnight when police stormed the building. The concert goers who managed to escape had to step over the bodies of many of those less fortunate. I didn't see the gunmen because they were inside, but I saw all of the dead laid out in front of the Bataclan. When I was evacuating one of the wounded, I was hit. It was gunfire for a very long time. They killed and killed and killed. I was surrounded by dead people. There were body parts everywhere. During the police assault, three of the assailants detonated their explosives. The fourth was killed by security forces. Well, and mourners across the globe stand in solidarity with France in one of its darkest hours. Buildings ranging from the Sydney Opera House in Australia to one, one World Trade Centre in New York. Uh, they were lit up in the colours of the French flag. Bouquets, candles and messages of condolence were laid at French embassies worldwide. Around 129 people were killed and scores injured after a series of coordinated attacks in the French capital.